Okay, so when they write out the law of cosines, they write it a lot of different ways. I only like to write it one way because I think that doing all those multiple ones is a little bit confusing. But right, here's my law of cosines. So if I have a missing side, we'll call that missing side A. Okay, then I can write A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cosine of the angle alpha. So notice how the only capital letter is at the very end. A capital letter represents our angle. Just going to put your phone up. Capital letter represents our angle. You take your airpod out there to be great. These are the side lengths, A, B, and C. So when we use the law of sines, which is what you did on Thursday and Friday, that was good if you were missing one side or one angle, but you knew a pair. Like you had, if I had a triangle here, if I knew that this angle was 55 degrees, then I had to know that one side opposite it was 6. So I call that a pair, where you have the angle and the side opposite it both. With law of sines, you have to have one of these pairs of an angle and a side. Well, for the law of cosines, it's going to be different. For the law of cosines, you're not going to have a pair. What you're going to have is two sides... B and C, and you're going to have an angle that is opposite the missing side, A. That's why they're labeled A and A. So, again, the, when you're going to work these problems later, the big question is going to be, how do I know when to use law of sines? How do I know when to use law of cosines? And it's going to all depend on what information you are given. And like I said, we'll practice more of that where we have mixed problems in the future. Okay, so here's the kind of problems that we can use the law of cosines for. So remember how I said to use the law of sines, you have to have an angle and its opposite side. In this triangle, I know an angle, 57 degrees. Do I know the opposite side, though? No. And then I know these two sides, but don't know anything about their opposite angles. No. So I don't have that pair. I don't have an angle and the side opposite it that you have to have to use the law of sines. Therefore, that tells me automatically this problem, I'm going to be using the law of cosines. Law of cosines. So again, you might want to write that law of cosines down, whatever, you got it. We just finished. It is A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of the angle opposite the missing side. So in this problem, my missing side is going to be side bc. So we're going to label our missing side with the letter a, okay, because it's opposite angle a this time. Now when I set this up, which side is going to be B? It can be. So we could call the 8 here B, and we could call the other side C. It really doesn't matter. If we get technical, right here is angle B, so we'd want the side opposite it to be B. And since here is angle C, we'd want the side opposite it to be C. But it really doesn't matter as long as you plug into the formula. Kind of like how the Pythagorean theorem doesn't care about which one's A and which one's B. Same idea here. So our missing side is A equals, let's make B, B10 squared, plus C, which is 8 squared, minus 2 times B, which is 10, times C, which is 8, times cosine of the angle it's opposite the missing side, so it's going to be cosine of 57 degrees.
Any questions about any part of that? How we labeled them? How we plugged them in? So now, what am I going to have to do? Plug all this into my calculator. I would do it all at once. Okay, if you have a Casio or a TI, I'd plug all that in at once. Do you want to um, just leave uh, the whatever equals the rest of that? Do you want us to just leave like the A squared? Just leave it alone? For now, yes. So I would leave this exactly like it is, and then I would just simplify everything on the right side. Because okay. everything over here is numbers. So I can type all that in. Once you plug all that in, you're going to get a decimal. It's not going to be really pretty. That should be 76.864 is what they got. So I want you all to practice putting that in your calculator and making sure you can get that number. If you don't get this number, let me know. I'll come help you. But again, the big part of this is going to be knowing how to use that calculator. Maybe the book's wrong. Let me just say. Let me do it on one of my papers. Just make sure I'm right. Seventy six point eight five seven, which would be eight five eight when I round. That what you guys got? Okay. Book did, did a bad job here. So it's seventy six point eight five eight. You got four? Yeah, you got a problem. Not four. Anybody else need to help? Get this number. Do we good? I think this calculator is in it. Right here. Yeah, 
year. Then that and right there, three, three degrees, four for me. Okay, we're good? Now, do we care what A squared is? No, we're looking for A. So how can I get rid of A squared? I have to take A square root or a radical on both sides. Take a radical here and here. It tells me A equals. Now I'm going to do radical 76.858. Well, I hadn't done it yet. You're, you beat me to it. Okay, I got 8.76, which I'm going to round to be 8.8. I'm going to go into one decimal place. 8.8. So that means my missing side, A, is 8.8. Okay, does everybody think they've got the first one set up correctly? Does so anybody need help setting it up? All right, I'm going to write down what it should look like. Okay, A squared equals, I'm going to use 6 squared plus 8 squared. If you pick the other order, that's fine. You can have 8 squared plus 6 squared. Doesn't matter. Minus. On the decimal for the radical, do we want to put the first number? So when you, let, let, me, let me show you what I want here. So it would be 2 times 6 times 8 times cosine of the angle. And in this problem, my angle is 62 degrees. But that's the setup. Yes, what do you need? I'm bringing the food now, and then I've got to go back home. And okay. Right, sorry. You there? You here? Thank you. All right. Any questions about this setup? All right, now plug all this in, your calculator. Let's see if we get the same thing. 54.930. And then, okay, so hold on. So we're going to go to three, we're going to three decimal places. Okay, so 54.9307, that means the 7 is going to tell the 0 to go up. So my answer here is going to be A squared equals 54.931. That's what we want to round to. But you're right. My final answer, I don't care what A squared is. I want to find just A. So what I need to do then is take A square root of both sides. A should be equal to 7.411 and it should be 7.4 anybody questions so again I so I'm wanting you to make sure you're putting in your calculator correctly that's the hard part of these set it up correctly put in your calculator correctly that's all it's about but the good news is it's not you don't have to go through a lot of steps right it's not a lot of steps few steps but the steps are long okay so here is the second one so what do we notice about these two problems as compared to the ones we just got done doing. It doesn't have the angle. Like, exactly. This time we don't have an angle, but what we do have is the, um, all the sides. 
We do have three sides this time. We have the A squared this time. Mm -hmm. We do have the A squared this time. So, here's the important part of these. This time it asks me for angle X. The angle that I'm looking for, we're going to call that A. All right, that's my missing angle, is A. So the side opposite this has to be side A. That's the important part. Whatever angle you're looking for, the side opposite it is A. So because here I was looking for X, the side opposite it is going to be A. But does it matter which one's B and C? No. Those are interchangeable, but you have to have A labeled correctly. So now, if I have to set this problem up, what's it going to look like? What's my A? 4 squared, squared equals B, uh, 6 squared plus C, seven. 7 squared minus 2 times B, which is 6, times C, which is 7, times cosine of, I'm looking for the angle, A. Wait, how do we put the cosine of A, that A in our uh, calculator? You're not. It's going to be different. Okay. So we just... Just setting it up right now. I'm going to tell you how to put it in just a second. Wait, how do you put cosine of A in? Like, oh, okay. You can't. This one's going to be different. Is everybody good to hear? Yes. Okay. So here's going to be the algebra. There's a little bit of algebra to this one. It makes it a little bit harder. I'm going to leave it all like this. We have to solve for A. In the last set of problems, the A was already by itself. Now the A is stuck inside of a cosine. So we've got a lot of steps we have to do to get A by itself. So I'm going to do it without putting any numbers. Like, I don't care what these numbers are yet. Let's just leave them the way they are. Here's the easy way to do it. We're going to... Are you okay with moving things over and changing the sign? You're okay with that? So I'm going to move 6 squared over, and I'm going to move 7 squared over, and both of those are going to become negative. So now I've got 4 squared minus 6 squared minus 7 squared. And equals negative 2 times 6 times 7. So I'm closer to getting A by itself. Right? Not yet. Now, all these things are being multiplied. Negative 2 times 6 times 7. So I'm going to divide by negative 2 times 6 times 7. So that way, all this cancels. If I divide by that on one side, I have to divide by that on the other. Negative 2 times 6 times 7. So let me write this down really quickly. So what's left? Cosine of A. So you did some problems like this last week. Whether you did them or not, I don't know. But I showed you how to do this. If I've got to get A by itself, this is not multiplied. This is not cosine times alpha. This is cosine of alpha. So the way we undo a cosine, like how do you undo multiplying? You divide. How do you undo adding? You subtract. How am I going to undo a cosine? We have a process called an inverse cosine. Inverse cosine. And so when I take the inverse cosine of cosine, those cancel. And that leaves me with A. And now this is what you're going to put in your calculator. Okay, so there's a few more steps you have to do before you get there. Does everybody know how to get inverse cosine? You're going to click your little shift button or your little second button. And you're going to hit cosine. I'll give you inverse cosine. 
Then if you've got Casio, you need to put in your big fraction. Next. Minus one. The one that has a minus one at the top. The inverse. So let's say you click second cosine. You gotta click shift cosine to get that. So Casio people, you can make yours look like this. Everybody else, you're gonna have to listen to me for a second. So make sure you put it in correctly. So if you've got a TI, if you've got one of my calculators that's a TI, this one I need you to put in. So everybody found their inverse cosine button. Yes? Everybody good with that? Now, if you don't have a fraction button, if you have to use division, this is what you have to put in. You're going to have to put parentheses. I know it already has a parenthesis. You've got to put another parenthesis. And you're going to put 4 squared minus 6 squared minus 7 squared. And you're going to close parentheses. Just close one of them. Don't close them both. Just close one parenthesis. And then you're going to have to put your division sign divided by. Then you're going to put parentheses again. And I want you to put negative 2 times 6 times 7. Close parentheses. And then close them. So again, if you've got a Casio, you don't have to worry about this. But any Texas instrument, or anybody that doesn't have a fraction button, that can't make your calculator look like this, you have to put it in like that, over there, if you're going to do it all at once. Now, when you do that, what did we get our answer to be? A equals... It should round up to 34.8 degrees. So, 0.77 would round up to 34.8. So what I need, if you didn't get 34.8 and you need me to help you put this in, let me know. Because that's a lot to put in your calculator. I understand. Anybody? Okay, so I did it and it said error. Let's come look. Okay. Yes, it is. Your error is because that this calculator does not recognize this as a negative. This is subtraction. You have to hit this button for negative. Okay. Anybody else? Didn't get 34.8. You're divided by. That's your division button. That's what it should look like, though, right? Is a slash. I don't know. You get those. That's okay. You don't have to do it that way. You got Casio. You can make it look just like. You hit this fraction button here, and then just type in exactly how mine looks. Four squared minus six squared minus seven squared. Anybody else on A needs help with their calculator? Okay, what I want you to do is try B. All right, go through exactly what we did. Set it up. 